I'm Angie Vividson and I teach ELL at Brooklyn Junior High. And the first time that I heard about lo Love and Logic was maybe two or three years ago when we did a staff training. And the thing that piqued my interest was that they said it would reduce behavior problems in the classroom. And um, as somebody who has dealt with some behavior problems, I was excited about that. And so during that training, I remember a couple key points, one being that it's important to give the kids choices so that they feel empowered, choices that you can live with, like would you like to go to the bathroom in three minutes or would you like to wait until the end of the hour? Both choices would be fine for me and the kid feels like he gets to make a choice. So that was one thing that I remembered. And the other thing was if you have an issue with a student to just make a little comment and keep moving on, don't make a big issue of it. Um, and I think that was something that I could also employ right away and I felt like it made a difference. In November, I was able to attend a training in Denver with a couple other staff members and that was just enlightening. I got so much more information that really made a difference in my classroom. I also collaborate with some other teachers and in my English collaborative class we were able to implement one single classroom rule and that was feel free to do anything that doesn't cause a problem for anyone else. And that gave us some key vocabulary to use with the students. So whenever there was an issue, we could just say, this is causing a problem for you or for another student or for me as the teacher. Then it gave the students responsibility, it gave them ownership of their behavior, and then we would kind of work through the issue together. Um, that was one key thing that we did after I returned from the conference. Some other things that have come up with parents or other staff members, um, in the hallway I was talking to one teacher who said, oh, I'm so frustrated, I just had a conversation with a parent, and I couldn't seem to get her to understand the importance of getting her student to school on time. And she said, apparently, the teacher, or excuse me, the parent, needed to go to Starbucks before she could drop her student off. And we were kind of laughing about that. And I said, did you try the love and logic strategy of giving suggestions? Well, can I tell you what some other parents do? Some other parents drop their child off and then go to Starbucks. And we laughed, and then she said, I should have done that. And so it kind of made me go back and think, yes, this is another strategy that I need to use as well. Giving the kids some options if they don't know which choice to make, you can say, well, let me tell you what some other students have done. Some other students have chosen to work quietly until the end of the hour. Or some other students have chosen to move their desk away from other students who are distracted. So giving the kid options again, and in this case, giving the parent some options, um, is really a good strategy. Good, okay. <laughs> um, besides using love and logic in the classroom, I've also used it with my toddler son at home. Um, one thing that can be used both at home and in the classroom is disengaging from situations that may become arguments or kind of a power struggle. Um, if a student or a child comes to you with a problem, our first reaction is to say, oh, let me help you, let me fix that problem. And what we can do by disengaging in just having like one simple phrase like, oh, that's too bad, what are you gonna do about it? You know, putting it back on the student and making it their problem. So many times, even in junior high, we have students that don't have pencils or have um, lost their books. And, and oftentimes, my first reaction would be like, oh, well, let me give you my pencil or let me take care of this. And really, we need to teach the kids responsibility and make it their problem and have them find a way to fix it. And so, you know, sometimes I will offer suggestions. Well, that's too bad. What are you going to do about it? And then if they don't know, I can say, well, you could ask another person, another student if you have a pencil, you could write with a pen, give them some choices, some options that they can use, but ultimately it's their problem, it's their decision. Um, that's something that, like I said, I use at home too with my toddler, and it really teaches him to think on his own, it really empowers him to be able to solve problems, and oftentimes if I have a problem, he'll say, what are you going to do? <laughs> Which, it's great to see that and him as well.
Hi, my name is Pam Osborne and I'm the Counseling Secretary at Brooklyn Junior High School. This is my 26th year here, so I've seen a lot of change over the years. Um, as of the last couple of years, administration has decided that discipline should come through counseling. In other words, if students are sent out of class, they need to check in with me in order to see an administrator. Uh, in years past, um, kids obviously when they're kicked out of class or sent out of class are angry, so when they get to me they're angry and I really used to feed off of that a lot in terms of if they got lippy with me, I'd confront them and obviously it just made me more agitated and angry and that just gave that behavior back to the child. So through Love and Logic, which I found out about through another co-worker, um, that it really worked for her and I noticed that it worked for her. I watched her in the office with kids and it was like, wow, there really is something to this. So I signed up for the next group. And through Love and Logic, I learned that, which I never knew before, that when someone's really angry, um, their frontal lobe shuts down, I believe is what happens. And they're not hearing what you're saying. So you're basically just talking to a brick wall. And so I've learned when they come in like that to just, you know, have them sit down, say, you know, someone will be with you in a minute, and I'm sorry you're really upset. And that way I'm not on their behavior. And that just really helps me not be so agitated <laughs> with them. And another thing that I used to have a lot of trouble with was um, getting kids to, like, pull up their pants or take something off that they shouldn't have on and I used to just say it out loud you know to them pull up your pants and now I'll whisper it to them I'll walk up to them on my own when there's no one else around and ask them and that usually really works quite well and then sometimes after that all you have to do is just look at them and they know exactly what what you're saying to them and I just um, Another thing I've tried to do is build more positive relationships with kids. Um, when they're in, they're just trying to talk to them more, that type of thing. And then a lot of times I've found that the nicer I am to them, the more they behave for me because they like me and they don't want me angry at them or to hurt me. So it really has made my life a lot easier at work, and I wish I would have known about this years ago because it, it has been a struggle for me. And I guess that's about it. Hi, um, I just wanted to say one other thing um, about how important I think it is to just keep updated and learning about this. We do get monthly newsletters um, over the internet from Love & Logic, but years of behavior and the way you're raised and that type of thing totally um, help determine on how you deal with things like this and as much as I try to do the love and logic things because it makes so much sense every once in a while I will get sucked back into my old ways like um, for instance yesterday I had a student that came in to the office and she wanted to see a counselor um, didn't have an appointment the counselor wasn't even available for an hour and I told the girl this and she just refused to leave she just was gonna sit there no matter what the teacher called to check on her and she wasn't supposed to be staying there. And I found myself starting to argue with her about why she was there and that she needed to leave rather than just letting it play out the way I should have. Uh, so it does, I really, again, would like to see something monthly or bi-monthly that just gives us a little, little reminder, um, maybe a couple additional interventions, that type of thing like that that we can use because it's really easy to go back to the way you did things before because that's what's natural for you. Okay.